It is game week for Syracuse football, the 315 college football back with week zero last weekend. This weekend, we get Syracuse football back in action. So, what better way to celebrate the return of Syracuse football than taking a dive into some preseason awards? We're giving out the Locked On Syracuse preseason awards. That's going to be MVP. Player of the Years, Rookie of the Years, Stat Leader Predictions, and so much more. Let's have some fun today on your Locked On Syracuse Monday episode. Let's get right after it. It is game week. Let's get fired up. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? What's happening? Welcome into your Lockdown Syracuse Monday episode. I'm Owen Valentine saying thank you so much for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen today and every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. It's Monday, it's game week, Syracuse football is back on Saturday. I got tickets over the weekend. I did not get the season tickets. Probably should have in hindsight, but I just, I know I'll have uh, some conflicts uh, and I'll, I'll just piece it together game by game. But I got my tickets for Colgate on Saturday. Last time I checked the weather, looks to be a beautiful day. Going to get there early, going to hang out in a lot, have a few brews maybe, have a few uh, dogs, snacks, whatever. Get out there early, tailgate, have some fun get back into the swing of fall in Syracuse football. My last weekend before school starts back up. So enjoying it uh, and having some fun. Get a ticket, right? The tickets are cheap. I think there's a ton under $20. So very much uh, not going to break the bank to be there for Syracuse's season opener. Fun day, fun environment, uh, and a good way to get back into the swing of fall. Uh, But today, We're going to do some preseason awards. You've been seeing a handful of them. Rondé Gadsden ranking up some some All-American ideas uh, in theory, not quite confirmed by any means. He's making top 100 lists for college football players overall. Schrader's making watch lists. Uh, Syracuse's defense is making watch lists. Marlo Wack, Caleb Okachuku, to name a few, uh, getting on some lists. Definitely drawing some eyes in the early going. I believe Rondé Gadsden is a preseason ACC uh, all ACC player, a bunch of nods coming out. So today we take a look at some nods that we can give on Lockdown Syracuse. So we're going to look at a handful of categories. I'm going to give an overall MVP. Those of you who have been listening are everydayers. How do you not know who that is at this point in time? An offensive player of the year, a defensive player of the year, some rookie or sort of breakout player of the year, right? A guy that wasn't a huge contributor last year um, or a newer player. And then we'll look at the statistical categories, right? Who's going to lead the team in sacks? Who's going to force the most fumbles, uh, cause the most interceptions, touchdowns, rushing yards, receiving yards, all of this. We're going to have some fun today, make some predictions. Maybe we revisit this uh, at the end of the season, see how I did compared to what the final awards will end up being. I'm going to start with the overall MVP. This is a guy that we continue to talk about. He is the most valuable player in that I have said this time and time again. He makes or breaks Syracuse's football season. And if you want to throw the the even greater concept in here, this player is the driver of Dino Baber's next contract. Whether it's at Syracuse, whether it's an extension, whether it's bigger dollars, less dollars, his performance this year is so valuable to Syracuse's success that he will drive the bus in terms of what is next for Dino Babers, and I genuinely mean that. That player is Garrett Schrader, if you did not know. I have said it probably 80% of the football episodes that we have done in the month of August leading up to this week, leading up to this season, that Garrett Schrader makes or breaks what Syracuse can do this year. A fifth-year guy. They, all of the veteran accolades you want to give him, right? He has been in so many systems, been with so many coordinators, finally has an ounce of consistency as this year, his fifth offensive coordinator in five years, is an upgrade from his quarterback's coach now to OC. 
you get that consistency. And it seems like the offense that's going to be run is pretty similar to what Robert and I left uh, before he departed from this program, right? What you're seeing here is is pretty good. And I, I like that a lot. And what Jason Beck has done is really cool. And it, it seems like this team is rallying around him. The offense likes what's happening. And it seems like that relationship between Schrader and Beck, and if you want to throw Gadsden in the mix as well, is really, really strong. Aronde Gadsden will be the – or not – Mm, maybe I'm second guessing myself there. I'm not going to say it. He's going to probably get the most awards around a Gadsden in terms of national spotlight, uh, just because of what he does positionally. He gets listed as a tight end, listed as a receiver, whatever you want to say. He's an NFL caliber player without question, and he will be in the league next season. But in terms of value, in terms of most valuable player, and if we want to get me on a tangent, I think there's oftentimes a disconnect between most valuable player and best player, right? Who is the best player? That's usually who wins the MVP. Who is the most valuable player? Typically a different guy, but I digress. I got Schrader here. I I think his season, his arm health, what he can do this year will make or break what Syracuse can do, right? He is not going to be the guy that, that racks up, you know, the national awards, most likely, right? Does he have a chance to win some stuff? Sure, if he has a really, really good year, he can pull that off. That is the caliber that you can expect from him. But he is going to be the guy that drives this bus. He is going to be the leader that will or will not bring people with him. And that is why he is this MVP. He's my overall MVP. I think you're insane to not predict him as your overall MVP. Garrett Schrader gets the overall MVP nod. Now I'm doing, we'll stick with the offense for now. We'll do an offensive player of the year. Now, I want to give a nod here and say that this is going to be, and a lot of our offensive categories are going to be non-Trader and non-Aronde Gadsden winners, all right? They're they're the two guys that are going to do the most. They are the clear option one and the quarterback, right? I want to get those other options in there, give some other players some recognition so that these predictions can be a little bit bolder than me saying, Aronde Gadsden is going to be your non-Schrader offensive player of the year. Or to get to our statistical categories, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the show, it's not anything special for me to say that I think Aronde Gadsden is going to lead the team in receiving yards. I do. So a lot of these categories are going to be non-Gadsden and non-Schrader. My offensive player of the year, right? I know I gave an MVP and it should be Schrader because I just said that, but let's go elsewhere. And this, I think... Is going to be a take that I I look back on fondly. There's always a chance that I get this wrong. And with any of these, if you think I botched completely, someone else is in there completely, or even in the comments, right? On YouTube, if you're watching, fire it off in the comments. Who should have won this? You agree with this? You disagree there? Leave your uh, overall MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and your rookies or newcomers of the year, whatever we're going to call that, uh, a little bit after this break. I'm giving this Offensive Player of the Year to LaQuint Allen. He's had a hell of an offseason. We know that, right? We know that. We know what's going on there. But it seems like his return to camp has been an incredible spark. It seems like he's got what it takes to be a guy that can slot in and replace Sean Tucker, who continues to turn heads at preseason camp with the Bucs. And it seems like when you look at what he did last season, albeit in a limited sample size, his numbers are pretty damn good. I like the yards per carry, uh, and and I think it's something that seven yards a carry, right, even though it is only on 41 attempts, seven yards a carry is nothing to be ashamed of. It's actually pretty darn impressive. I think he can be this player of the year because of what he can do supplementary, right? We know what Schrader can do. We know Schrader is going to be able to move the ball a little bit better this year, find some depth, find some other receivers. I think LaQuint Allen on the ground, is going to be able to do really, really big things for Syracuse in terms of setting up, you know, second and short type situations where you can take a long shot downfield. And it's going to help drive this offense a lot more. And as we've seen in the past, I think establishing this run game with LaQuim is going to be paramount into the defensive success because all too often, right, you've got your defense is tired, three and out, three and out, three and out, not enough time. I think LaQuint's going to have a big year. Uh, Just the single-digit number, right? New number. 
a nice nod for what he's been through, a nice nod for the performance he's had so far, and a nice nod to what seems like a guy that's really rallying at this team. Uh, and, and people are excited to play with him, play around him. So we'll give Quint Allen our offensive player of the year nod. I think he's going to have a really, really good year. Uh, I don't know exactly what my threshold for a great year for LaQuint Allen is yet, but I do think he's going to hit some really solid numbers and, and continue building off of what we saw, you know, in the bowl game, right? In the pinstripe bowl, he started to show it uh, and really looked good in that game. Let's take a quick break. After this, we'll talk a little bit. Defensive player of the year. Then we'll look at some newcomers slash rookie of the year predictions. Uh, I'm using the word rookie very generously. I'll give you that hint. Uh, and it might not be exactly who you think it is because these are, I think my rookie of the years are, are, are pretty hot takes or relatively hot takes uh, for this team. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, Athletic Brewing. It's a new sponsor. We're excited to have them. Uh, but first, now it is time for your game changer of the week. And this is going to be fun. We'll return to this a lot. Brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like, and we got to give a player right now. I'm going to give the nod to LaQuint Allen. Much like LaQuint Allen, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. The na they make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. I talk about LaQuint Allen. He's been through a ton this offseason. And it seems like he has come in with a new energy, a new vibe. And it's really nice to see because a lot of people, right, would be shut down, not as excited, angry, whatever you want to say. And he comes in and he is bringing people to the next level. We'll give LaQuinn Allen that nod. Uh, and that's why he's our game changer of the week at this point in time. So we're talking athletic brewing company. They have completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. Their brews are great tasting and award winning and beat out full strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Goldens, Sours, and more. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first order online. That's code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Oh, and Valentine. Here on your Locked On Syracuse Monday episode, we're doing some preseason accolades. We just talked Offensive Player of the Year. I'm going with Quint Allen there. We talked our overall MVP. That's Garrett Schrader. Let's go defensive. And this is one where I think there's two clear front runners, and I don't know where I want to lean yet. The two guys I've gone back and forth on a number of times are Marlo Wax and Caleb Okachupu. Both of these guys were, were leaders on this team defensively last season had incredibly strong seasons last year. And we look at them right now, and I, I'm trying to figure out which one I feel like is going to be above and beyond. And it's a hard decision. And I don't think you can go wrong making either of those plays. Where I lean right now is I, I look at what I saw last year. And in terms of value, when I talked about most valuable player stuff, I looked at what Michael Jones did last season, who we talked about Sean Tucker having a solid preseason with the NFL and the Bucks. It seems like Michael Jones is outperforming a lot of expectations with the Chargers at this point in time, a guy to continue having an eye on. But Michael Jones elevated players and was that defensive leader. And right now, I lead to that position group. I lean to the linebackers because of what that sort of is role-wise on a defense. He is a captain. I'll give you that. There are more captains being added, so they could both be captains when all is said and done. But I'm going to go DPOI to Marlo Wax. I like that he is in that linebacking group. I like that positionally that is where a leader typically will come from, not that they can't come from elsewhere in the defense. I'm going to give the nod to Marlo Wax. He had an unbelievable year last season, right? I mean, so did uh, Caleb for what we're talking here. Uh, led the team in tackles for loss with 10 and a half tackles for loss for 48 yards. Four and a half sacks on the year. Uh, that is second on the team, only behind Okachukwu. So, you know, you've got that, but positionally it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, I'll give the nod to Marlo Wax for the defensive player of the year. And if you tell me I'm wrong on that one, I would believe it. Right. I, I think Okachuku is an equally great option, but I'm going to give the nod to Marlowe 
almost positional advantage, I might even say. And he's the captain right now, so we'll give him that player of the year stuff for defensive side of the ball. Let's go to the rookies or newcomers of the year or player that didn't play a ton last season. Uh, it's almost a breakout player. It could be a transfer, a rookie, guy who didn't play a ton. Offensively, and this is, you know, an interesting take I'm going to say for myself, give myself a self-pat on the back. I'm looking at the offensive line. And this is an O-line right now that, that has some question marks. Um, you know, at the center too, Josh Aloha, John Ray Reed. Who's going to start at center? We're not even sure at this point in time. I've talked to multiple people. I've heard both answers. Uh, you've got some experience, right? Come on, Ellis, or Kalen Ellis, Chris Bleich. I'm looking outside, though. I'm looking at the tackles, and I, I want to find one of these two. And I think the newcomer of the year or the breakout player of the year is a guy that has been high energy. He's a guy that has been here more than one year, so that could cross off someone from that list and give you the answer at this point in time. A guy that it seems like is well resonating with the fan base. He's got his own tailgate named after him, courtesy of a fun NIL deal at this point in time. He's a guy that I had on the Ostrom Avenue podcast right when he committed, back when I was at WAR at Syracuse. Awesome dude, really fun. And I think this is his year, a chance to break out, and a chance to get that heightened role. If you don't know yet, if it hasn't hit you, it's Enrique Cruz, who is the theoretical, and I would be astonished if this wasn't the case, starting left tackle for Syracuse uh, this entire season. I think he's poised to have a really good year. I've seen things in his time at Syracuse so far that have stood out. I like what he does. I like the energy, and I, I'm a big energy guy. All right, You can say it's a kappa. I am an energy guy. Uh, I like what he does, and it seems like He's had the right sort of growth and the right buildup to being able to, to get to this point in time. And I, I like what he has done. You see him on the field. He is able to come in, and he had some moments, right? And this is a very valuable group and a group that needs somebody to step up and honestly needs two or three guys to step up. And I look at Cruz to be able to do that. Uh, he has eyes on it, right? You're going to see if this doesn't pan out. But he is my offensive sort of breakout player of the year in terms of predictions at this point in time. Let's look at the defensive side of the ball. The defense, you know, I told you this, and I, I have thrown my hand up in the air and said I am sorry. I panicked about the defense. Some big-time departures, right? You lose your starting cornerback, albeit he was injured, to the NFL. Great stuff with Garrett Williams. But then you lose Deuce to the portal. Then who else do you lose to the portal? Jihad Carter. You lose to the portal. You lose Linton to the portal, who I believe I just saw. I hope I'm not wrong in saying this. Uh, let me try and Google as I talk. He was listed at like the top 15 transfers in the country in terms of importance, in terms of what's going to happen by The Athletic, not some random uh, organization. But you lost some big names in this defense. And I panicked. And the more I look at what I think this two deep will look like, the more I look at other people predicting depth charts at this point in time, I like where the defense is. And there is a lot of returning talent and returning starters on this defense, which makes finding a breakout player a little bit difficult, right? Okachukwu, Lockett, Thompson, Wax, Derek McDonald, Isaiah Johnson, Jeremiah Wilson even. You know, Elijah Clark, Barron, Jason Simmons, all of these guys were taking pretty bulk snaps last year. The lowest of that group, and, you know, I don't have the stat in front of me, so this could be off. I feel like would be Jeremiah Wilson at this point in time. But I'm going to go a little bit different in terms of this. This is someone that when we had Emily Liker on the pod last week, she had mentioned. Uh, I'm going to look at a guy that is a brand new transfer portal guy, and that's Jalen Bellamy. Jaden Bellamy is, is a guy that I think – has the best likelihood of, of these new transfers to breach the starting lineup and, and play the most. Uh, and I think he has got what it takes. And although there's limited sample size on him, right, this is a vibe thing. This is a what I've heard about practice, what I've seen in practice, and some rumblings around preseason camp. This is a guy that I think is in a position where he has a chance to battle 
right? You guys know more than anything. I love Jeremiah Wilson. He is one of my favorite players on this team and has been since the first preseason camp clip I saw of him last season. He is by no means a set in so a set in stone starter for this entire season. And Bellamy, I think, is that next cornerback option and a guy that is going to naturally see the field. And then snaps lead to interceptions. Interceptions lead to, ooh, this guy's pretty good. Interceptions and ooh, this guy's pretty good leads to breakout player of the year, rookie of the year, transfer of the year, whatever you want to call it at this point in time. Jaden Bellamy, that's one that I feel like there are a lot of options you could go with. I mean, you could say um, that Jeremiah Wilson is going to be that guy and and very much could be. Um, But I I went with the newer face to add some, you know, differentiation here uh, to this situation. Jaden Gould, you know, your two Jadens you got from the portal, also an option in there. There's a number of other options that you could look at as well. And if you talk to a bunch of people, that's a question who is the defensive breakout guy of the year? Uh, that is a guy or a question that you can get a number of different answers to. All right. Those are our sort of award awards. But let's do some statistical predictions and, and predict who these stat leaders are going to be for Syracuse football in 2023. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about game day. You ever been stressed out buying tickets? I have. All right. I bought Zach Bryan tickets. And those of you who know Zach Bryan, he just released an album last Friday. But Zach Bryan is very adamant that your tickets come from one place and one place only. And once they sell out, they're gone. And I had to get them from another spot. And it's difficult. And it's stressful buying tickets, especially when you get closer and closer to that concert, that game, that whatever, whatever event you're thinking of, comedians, whoever it might be, it can be stressful. And buying tickets to your favorite events, it shouldn't be stressful. And game time can be your answer to that. It's fast. It's an easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. I love this place. They got flash deals, last-minute tickets. It's easy to find. Buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. They have images of seat views, low price guarantees, event cancellation protection, and so much more. I like this place. It's the place for last minute ticket deals. I procrastinate, okay? Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up until the day of the event. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Oh, and Valentine, on your Locked On Syracuse Monday episode, we are breaking down some preseason awards. Now we're taking a look at some statistical leader predictions for Syracuse. We'll start with the offense. Start with rushing touchdowns. And I said LaQuinn Allen is going to be my player of the year on the offensive side, but here's the take. Garrett Schrader will have more rushing touchdowns than LaQuinn Allen will this season. And my reason for that is I do feel like Syracuse, depth chart-wise, at the running back, is going to be in a position to rotate runners a little bit. And that's going to naturally take away from the touchdowns and, and the pay dirt that you're going to see LaQuinn Allen hit. Uh, I look at this squad. I look at Juwan Price as a guy that can get the ball. I look at Ike Daniels, even the true freshman, as a guy that could possibly see the ball a decent amount. Or not a decent amount, but a little bit. Uh, and I think when you look at the style of offense that Syracuse wants to run, when you look at what happened last season, and you look at the individual statistics, Sean Tucker was Syracuse's best running back in I don't know how long. And he was only two rushing touchdowns ahead of Garrett Schrader. So when we look at this right now, I see Schrader as your guy that leads this team in rushing yards. It's something that you're seeing at the NFL level with Hertz. And and being that goal line option yourself uh, is something that you're going to continue to see, plus the fact that Schrader can just break out at any point, get outside, find a gap, and move. I'm going to say Schrader is that rushing touchdown leader for this team. Passing or receiving touchdowns, I am going to say Aronde Gadsden is the answer. I'm going to give you the non-Aronde answer. And my non Aronde touchdown leader, I'm going to go to Damian Alford. 6'6". Okay, that is huge. 
in terms of goal line option, in terms of making yourself a solid option inside the red zone. I think he easily could slot into that wide receiver two spot. And I know you can say Gadsden's a tight end, so he's wide receiver one. We're calling Gadsden a receiver on this channel. And we'll hint at the fact that he is a tight end as well, because he does line up there, what, 15% of the time? For our, per our PFF stats guy, Max Chadwick, Damian Alford, I like him as a red zone option, and I think that's where you're going to see his best utilization. Now, receiving yards leader, here's where we'll go different. Once again, Aronde Gadsden is my answer, but we're going to go with a non aronde answer as well. I look at Isaiah Jones. I think Isaiah Jones, outside of Aronde Gadsden, leads this team in receiving yards. I loved what I saw from him pre-injury, albeit in limited sample size last season. I look at him to have a huge season. And in terms of breakout player, you know, he could very much be in that conversation on the offensive side of the ball. I think he is going to be a guy that can get the ball a lot early on, a guy that is going to help you drive tremendously. And then, as I said, you know, a little bit shorter. He made a great play in the end zone last season, but I think Alfred's that red zone option. I think Jones helps get you there, and that's where those yards are going to come from, those bulk yards, things like that. Uh, and I, I think he can lead this team in receiving yards outside of Aronde Gadsden. Now we look to the defensive side of the ball. We'll do sacks, forced fumbles, and interceptions. And my sacks, you know, he led the team in sacks last season. How can I go against him, right? It's It would be a bold take. Some might say it would be a stupid take. Caleb Okachuku is my guy here, right? I feel like he leads this team in sacks without question. I gave, you know, Marlo Wax the positional advantage for DPOY. I give Okachuku the advantage for sacks, right? I like what they do. They're incredible players. They're both fun. Uh, but I look at Okachuku, who, although had a half tackle for loss less than Wax, uh, and they're both consistent presences in the backfield, which is awesome to see. Okachuku is the sack leader on this team. I don't see a way it's not. And with that, I will also predict that Okachuku leads this team in forced fumbles this season. I think that is something that isn't even bold with sacks, with pressures, with backfield presence comes forced fumbles. He was one of three players last season with two forced fumbles. Anwar Sparrow in the mix there, Okachuku, and then Marlo Wax had two as well. I, I think he... It comes with the territory, right? That presence in the backfield, that nature is just going to naturally bring you sacks, bring you forced fumbles, and you give Okachuku the nod on both of those. Interceptions, I think there are a number of guys that you can go with. I'm going to go out wide. I am going to go with who I think is the most solidified cornerback at this point in time in terms of going to get the most snaps and has the most solid case for being – a cornerback and a starting cornerback this entire time. Whereas if a guy like, you know, Jaden Bellamy makes that jump, I don't think his position's at risk. So I will give the interception prediction to our guy, Isaiah Johnson. I think he's going to have a good year. I like what he's done. Uh, he showed really good stuff last season. And, you know, I was as hype as anyone could be um, about our boys at the cornerback spot, right? We were watching him. I love my Jeremiah Wilson. I'll say it every episode. I'll say it whenever. Right? We were hype on Wilson. But when it came to in-game performance last season, and when it came to being that first guy, Isaiah Johnson was the answer at cornerback. And you saw that when uh, you lost Garrett Williams last season. And he was the guy that slotted in. And I thought played pretty well. Could there be improvements? Undoubtedly. But he's a younger player slotting into that role. And when you look at him, although now he, he's got that experience, right? He comes in as a, as a transfer from Dartmouth. He's got the higher level experience. I like where that leads him. He had an interception last year. He had a pass breakup last year. And I think he leads Syracuse football in interceptions this time around. Throw your ideas out there. Did I miss a category? Um, am I dead wrong on something? Join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at LO underscore Syracuse over there. That'll do it for our Monday episode. It's game week. Get excited. Have some fun. Uh, thank you for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen today and every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. That'll do it. I'm Owen Valentine. Be kind. Make somebody smile today. Be a good human being. And have a great week, everybody.